Hello everybody, welcome back to The Shed, welcome to another episode. Finally back on the Starlet tonight, I'm excited to be doing it. I don't really have a plan, probably just a small couple of odd jobs and one job in particular for the driver corner that I've been putting off for ages, but I'm going to show you what I'm after doing. Let's get into it. Okay, so a couple of videos ago, you seen me fitting these BC racing coilovers on all four corners and completing the uh, passenger side, putting on the the new anti-roll bar and putting on the drop link onto the um, sway bar or whatever you want to call it, lower control arm, I suppose. And when I came to this side, when I came to putting it on the two bolts that hold on the back part of this arm here, <coughs> So this flat surface here bolts up to the underneath of the car. The treads were just destroyed and it was completely my own fault. I wrecked them and I know when I did it. So this car has gone through a couple of different um, phases of disrepair, I suppose you could say. Um, when I had bought it originally, I got it and kind of stripped it down and painted up stuff kind of just to tidy a bit up. And I took out that them bolts and when I was putting it back in, on both of them at one stage, I could remember feeling them getting a bit tight. So I just gave it two uggas and a dugga and just drove it home and said, I'll never be taking it out again, so it'll be fine. Which I'm obviously after paying for now because I'm after giving probably the last half an hour, 45 minutes, running through and cleaning them treads. I think I'd mentioned this in the video previous as well and a mate of mine contacted me because I didn't have the, the tool, the, what's it called, the tap to actually clean out the treads, so this, M12 by 1.25. I had a load of other ones, but I didn't have this exact one. So he got onto me, said he had it, and I could take it to clean it out. And I came one day a couple of weeks ago as well to actually do this job. And when I got in underneath it, the anti roll bar and stuff was in my way, and I just didn't have the head for it, even though it was only a case of four volts. I just left it and didn't do it. So after doing that now, so what I'm going to do is put on the lower control arm with the white line. Um, anti-lift kit little spacer that's on it then as well and fit it up fit it properly get the hub on it put the coilover back on and finally fit uh, fully the anti-roll bar with the drop link on it as well we'll might might do one or two other small things probably going to be a shorter video today but i just wanted to jump on do this silly job that i've been putting off for far too long now and get the thing actually ready to be able to take a set of wheels and loads corners. of work to do with it i have rear calibers to rebuild or to rebuild, I still need to paint the interior. Haven't touched the interior since the last video. Um, I don't really know. Well, I know why I'm waiting. Um, and maybe you might be able to help me out a small bit as well. So I want to paint the interior of the car, the 205 black, which this car will all go to a 205 black as well. But what I want to do is get a matte finish on the paint. Um, so. I've been doing a bit of reading online and there's a lot of kind of conflict and stuff or information out there. So if anybody actually knows how I could get that finish, um, drop a comment below and let me know. I'd love to, if anyone is following the Juice Box channel, the way Neil uh, painted the inside of his 86, it was, I think, a gunmetal grey and then with a matte finish on the inside. And that's kind of exactly what I want on the interior of this as well. But some lads are saying it's uh, it's uh, something you mix into your clear coat or it's a particular kind of clear coat or it's actually something you put into the, the base colour itself. So I just want to know 100% what I'm actually doing before I do it. Um, and then I can crack on and get that done. We have all the interior parts. I'm dying to see the car with the full interior back in it as well or in it, the GT interior for in it for the first time. I'm mad to see that. So yeah, if you know anything about do, getting a matte finish on paint, Please drop a comment below and let me know and we'll get into assembling this side of the car here.
again everybody it's the next day and welcome back to the shade so last night was fairly much a, a complete disaster and in the last clip that you would have seen was practically the first job that I was doing last night which was putting back on the lower control arm for the car right and the bolts again so the two bolts at the back to hold in the the m12 bolts that hold up the anti-lift kit again got tight only one of them actually got tight as soon as the bracket and stuff went on so i wasn't going to pull up this video because i was just got so frustrated with it last night nothing was going right for me Um, i stuck with it i probably I'd say I was probably doing, doing this one job for about four hours and it bit me for a good while. And I said I wasn't gonna put up the video because I wasn't able to do it. But um, yeah, look, like it's not, I'm not a mechanic and I'm not like a master or car builder or anything like that. And I'm not the only one that's running into issues when they're putting a the car together like this. So I said, why wouldn't I share it or at least show what went wrong for me and how did I sort it? Or it's not 100% sorted yet, but I just said I'd show you, um, rather than just not putting anything out there and making it all seem like it's fine. So, just for context as well, when I cleaned out the treads with that M12 by 1.25 bit, I ran the bolts up and down through it uh, multiple times beforehand, no problem at all, they'd get tight, I was able to get a good squeeze in them, perfect. But then as soon as I went back on with the lower control arm and the anti-lift kit, there was a problem. So I'll just show you what way I went about doing things and show you where my issues were. So it's all assembled now um, and it might look good at a glance but I'll show you what I came into problem with. So when I put this back on this was the first bolt so 17 middle head on that. I turned that through along got it on a hand tight got a couple of treads on it and then went to go at this here. So that's what you had seen in the last clip was me tightening these two bolts and it was this outside one. There was still a good couple in the middle of space and it started getting tight. So I said stop before I do even more damage to the treads and see what I'm after doing wrong. So removed them bolts, removed the anti-lift kit, removed the lower control arm completely. And what I said I'd do is fit it from the back first. So fit the fit the anti-lift kit side first so I did that got the bolts up through it no problem at all and then when I came to slotten this up into this section here as I look through it it's like the bottom side of this wishbone was just at an angle so instead of kind of sitting straight for the bolt to go through it looked like I'm exaggerating it but it looks like it was kind of sitting like that and the bolt just would not uh, would not go home so it was as if the anti-lift kit was tilting the wishbone too low at the back side um, for this bolt to be able to go through it. And no matter how much I slackened off the, bolt, the bolts of the lift kit, it just still wouldn't line up. Um, I eventually got it after literally probably spending about two or three hours trying to get it figured out. Eventually got it by having only a bare couple of treads in on the bolts in the back and eventually got this in and persuaded it to get in. and got all that tightened up so then that was fine so then I said at least I'd finish the evening with a nice job and just throw on this uh, drop link for the anti-roll bar and then that completely went wrong as well so I don't know did I get the wrong part number or whatever but when I fitted this on the passenger side it was perfect so it was no problem at all and I'll show you the difference between the two of them as well um, so my very first thing if I put the camera in underneath here is you can see this bolt here holding the bottom of the drop link is gone tight and it's only barely after catching a couple of treads on it and it was very tight to actually get a squeeze on it after even just just a couple of treads right but then if you compare that to the drop link on the passenger side you see there's plenty there's plenty of treads after coming out the bottom of that and they're both the very same thing and the same with this so when I tightened on this bolt here, no problem whatsoever, went in, no problem at all, and that's actually on video of me doing that. I think that fitting that drop link took me about five minutes. But then when I went doing it last night, 
I don't know. Am I doing something wrong? Is the part wrong? Um, you can let me know in the comments if the, if you see anything that I've done wrong. This is a this is a drop or an anti roll bar off of a Glenza. The drop links I got are off a of Glenza, and the the lower control arms are actually from this car, so standard. But they have the slot to be able to take the drop links for the anti roll bar, and it all lines up spot on. But then. The very same thing happened, and it could be related to just the part. When I put this bolt on, this nut on here, to tighten it up, I'd say I got two turns in it, and then it just became unbelievably tight. And I don't know if you see it in the camera, there's a section there to put an Allen key into to stop the inner shaft, or whatever you want to call it, of this from spinning. And after about two turns, the, it was nearly impossible to hold the Allen key to stop that from, from spinning and it was just incredibly tight. And the Allen key even skipped inside in it then as well, so that thread is kind of damaged now. But I don't know, am I doing something wrong? My understanding is if you're doing so, something for an anti-roll bar and like that, it's not a good idea to have, say, one side jacked up because then you'll have kind of... I don't know what you'd call it, unsprung tension, or you'd have tension on it on the other side because the wheel is on the ground. I didn't think that would be an issue because obviously the car is up in the air, it's on axle sense. So yeah, um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I might buy a new one of these and see, but I don't know. It's just after it really, I suppose, got me frustrated last night because that side the time I was doing it probably took me 10 minutes and I gave, not even exaggerating, probably five hours in this corner here last night trying to figure this, figure all of this out. I was wondering, is it the uh, coilovers after pulling everything up that bit more and are they not at the same height on both sides but they both look the same. I measured this gap, it's both the same. I haven't set these coilovers or anything now, that's just the way they come out of the box. But yeah, um, it was a pretty frustrating night for something that I thought was just going to take a few minutes. Um, yeah, you can uh, let me know in the comments if you think I'm, I've done something wrong. Um, I saw a couple of things of lead saying that putting on them bolts for the lift kit are not, not the nicest job in the world and that this does happen, but um, yeah, just stuff went wrong. You know, it's the joys of having a project here and doing something like this and obviously there was never an anti-roll bar in this car. There was never drop links in this car. And it's all kind of new to me because it's not something I would have taken out of this car. Um, so it takes a bit of figuring out, I suppose. But yeah, I just said I put up the video to say what actually happened, why it went wrong, and hopefully get a bit of feedback from yourselves as well to see can we figure out what have I done wrong? Is the part wrong? Did I do something? You might see this and say, you complete idiot. You've done this completely wrong. And if I have, I have, and I've learned from it. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. And I suppose one little thing that slightly couldn't really go too far wrong is I fitted the fuel filter and the bracket back on and I fitted this braided line that I picked up from Flows for the fuel feed. Um, so every line that I can I'm going to try and replace with a nice little black AN line like this. So this will, this is actually a kit for a 20 valve uh, conversion for an 86 but I said I'd pick it up and see would it work and if I have to adjust the length of it it's not the end of the world either you can do that. But it'll sit somewhere, um, like sit around here, roughly, with the onto the fuel rail, and then I'll have an A in line coming off of it, which is roughly mocked up on the engine here. So that's the off line, and which will go to the pressure regulator, and hopefully get A in lines back to the return as well. Um, yeah, look, that's everything. That's everything. I just said I'd pop on and record a quick thing to show what the what my issues were and hopefully get a bit of help on it and like i said last night if anyone knows how to actually get the matte finish on paint you can let me know because i really want to get the interior of this thing painted and i really want to start getting this thing together um i kind of said to myself i'd have it ready this summer and i know it looks like it's a million miles away but it's kind of not it kind of is and it's kind of not but yeah i've uh not everything goes according to plan, and last night was the evidence of that. What should have taken me maybe 20 minutes or half an hour to reassemble the front took me four or five hours. So that's the joys of it. Um, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. <laughs> that's what I'm telling myself anyway. 
But yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know, as I said, if I've made a mistake. Let me know if you've ever come into this issue as well. Um, yeah, thanks for all the support. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting and let me know what you think. And I'll catch you in the next one when we might actually be able to make more progress with the car. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.